Hello Internet, time for another quick update on my LM512 Z80 computer project. Uh, today I want to show you the expansion port which I've added uh, down here. So this is just uh, a 26 pin um, IDC uh, header down here which you plug a ribbon cable into. Same kind of uh, cable that you use for old uh, IDE hard drives and uh, CD-ROM drives etc before SATA came along. So you know you can plug anything in uh, with, with one of these ribbon cables here, and the 26 pins of this interface bring out, um, you know, the, the Z80's data bus, um, the five lowest uh, order bits of the, the address bus, there are four separate chip select lines uh, coming from the, um, the you know, the uh, one to, so three to eight uh, address decoding chip I've got over here. Um, you know, power comes out, read, write comes out, all the obvious things. Uh, there are two interrupt inputs on here uh, of different different priorities up on my uh, uh, interrupt you know priority uh, decoding circuitry. So you can one of the input one of the interrupt inputs is very high priority. So you can have the computer respond very quickly to things happening sort of externally on the expansion port on the expansion interface, and one of them is kind of a medium priority. Um, Reset line, you know, is provided. Uh, the the clock line is sent out so that you can clock uh, your expansion peripherals from from the system clock. Um, and there's uh, the wait inputs so that you can kind of uh, put slow slow memory slow peripherals on on this bus without uh, causing problems with the, the faster CPU. Um, so yeah, you can you can stick anything anything you want on there. Um, today, just to demo this on the other end of this ribbon cable, uh, over on my breadboard in in a bit of a mess. Uh, hidden within this nest of wires, I've got a a simple um, dual eight bit digital to analog converter or or DAC. It's a um, Texas Instruments chip. It's a TLC something seven five two eight maybe. Um, and so you can you can write eight bit values to that over the Z80's uh, data bus and it will convert them to uh, a voltage between uh, you know, uh, ground and, and 5 volts um, and so just as a demo what I've got running on the Z80 right now on the CF card is an extremely simple program uh, simplest program I've written in this whole project so far actually all it does is uh, you know, write the, the contents of the A register to the, to the appropriate address on the, the DAC uh, increment that register and then and then loop. So all it is is counting from 0 to 255 uh, in a very tight loop, and at each step it's sending the result out to the DAC. Um, we're just turning this into an analog value. And if I move the camera and point at my oscilloscope over here, uh, you can see that this is producing, as you might have guessed, uh, a very nice sawtooth wave. So these um. You know, as you move from left to right, forward in time, the, the analog voltage is, is increasing from 0 to 5 volts as the A register increases from 0 to 255. And then when the register wraps around, uh, you know, the voltage uh, resets and you get this kind of nice, nice sawtooth wave going on. Um, so that's just a, a very simple demonstration, but of course you can, uh, you know, you, you can put any signal uh, out to that, to that deck that you like. Um, it's it's with the 10 megahertz at 80. It's fairly easy to get um, you know output frequencies coming out of the DAC in in the hundreds of kilohertz. So you can definitely do um, you can synthesize audio signals uh, over the full uh, full human audible band. Um, and because it's uh, because there are two two DACs on this chip, you can do stereo audio. I'm also hoping to be able to use my oscilloscope in the the X Y mode, where sort of one of your input channels controls. Uh, you know the x coordinate of the the cathode ray uh, beam, and the other input controls the y coordinate, and then you can kind of uh, you can draw on your oscilloscope with it. You can use it to do primitive primitive graphics. Um, and in fact, this this oscilloscope also has uh, a third input which can sort of turn the the beam on and off, and so you can actually do uh, full on raster graphics. And people have done some pretty cool stuff with that. So uh, you know that that'll be fun. Um, I also have uh, not set up today, but I have an eight bit. Uh, Analog to digital converter (ADC), which does exactly this in reverse. You can you can sample uh, an analog signal uh, from the outside world, say an audio signal, and you can read it into the Z80 in, in digital form. And um, you know, one of the 
one of the first expansion cards I'd like to make uh, for this interface is going to be a proper little you know, analog uh, analog I/O board, which can sort of you know read and write analog values, and you know you should be able to do some pretty cool audio stuff with that. You can you can read things in and then play them out, and you know add uh, add delays or you know all kinds of, of cool effects, um, which should be nice. Um, so some of you may have noticed that in my last video uh, I had the the AY uh, 38912 um, sound chip set up on the board about here. Um, that is indeed missing now, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. I had every intention when I installed the the AY chip of, of having this expansion interface, you know, set up on the board. But I underestimated just how much glue logic I, I needed to to make this work right. And um, you know, I just I, I honestly couldn't get them both to fit. So. I took out the sound chip, which is kind of sad, but you know, on the plus side, uh, I can just I can make an expansion card with that on there now and hook it up, you know, to the expansion port. And I actually have two of those chips. Um, you know, I bought them on eBay from a seller who salvages them from old, uh, you know, arcade games and, and video games, and sells them sort of untested as is. And so, I didn't want to buy one and find out that it was a dud, so I bought two to give myself a fighting chance. And uh, it turns out they both work, so. You know, I can make a card now with both of those on there and sort of have a, a six-channel uh, sound interface, which should be pretty cool. So that's uh, and that's one of my other high-priority expansion cards. And then I've got room on the bus for two more, and I have no idea what they'll be yet, but I'm, I'm sure I'll think of something. Uh, yeah, so that's it for the expansion port. Um, I mean, the board's starting to get pretty full now. Uh, you know, you can see I've, I've slightly upgraded my power supply down here. Nothing fancy. This is a kind of a very simple uh, reverse polarity protection circuit with a, a resettable uh, poly poly fuse, poly switch fuse, um, and a, a big beefy diode here. If if you hook the power up uh, backward, uh, you know this this diode, which is uh, reverse biased when you have things plugged in correctly, that becomes a short circuit across across your power supply, and that trips the poly fuse very very quickly. Uh, hopefully quickly enough to stop anything anything breaking. So, you know, that's just kind of a little bit of insurance, I guess I've done anything dumb. And the only other real sort of skerrick of free landscape on the board is this little hole down here. And what I'm planning to put in there very soon is a little, uh, uh, it's a quad uh, two-way uh, multiplexer chip, uh, 7400 kind of thing. And what I'm going to do is uh, use that to switch the um, the second serial channel on my UART here, the the in input and output on that. I want to be able to select between sending them to the but right now they're hardwired through this uh, RS two three two level shifter out here, so I can hook them up to my computer with a standard sort of RS two three two DB nine. Um, I'd like to be able to toggle between that and just sending them out straight to this little uh, six pin header here just as an unshifted sort of uh, 5 volt sort of TTO level logic signal so I can hook straight up to like uh, you know an Arduino or something which doesn't need RS-232 it just has has the 5 volt logic levels so that'll give me a little bit more flexibility in what I can easily hook up to this board without having to worry about level shifting again on on, uh, on the other end uh, and once that's then I mean I'm, I'm absolutely out of room so this is uh, you know getting near the end of the, the harbor stage of this project and then I have a hell of a lot of uh, assembly coding to do to to make full use of this so that'll be fun uh, all right uh, thanks for watching bye